Greetings, everyone. Coin stamp here. I might shorten that further, if I'm being completely honest. Um, and welcome back to another episode of Elden Ring Reforged. Last time, we uh, finished traipsing through Eastern Liurnia, with the exception of the River Well. Uh, we uh, proceeded to the Grand Lift of Dectus, uh, fought a tree sentinel, um, got ourselves a spiffy new spell, the Javelin of Gold, and who oh boy does Javelin of Gold pack a punch, a real one. Um, it is probably the strongest incantation I've, got, I've managed to get my hands on yet. Then again, I've never touched a late game incantation, so it would be hard to... T to tell you otherwise. Um, after that, we proceeded to test that at the uh, Rose Church and the Lakeside Crystal Cave. And at that Crystal Cave, we got a new fortune. The, um, the Fortune of Latena, which is an arcane... Um, it is an intelligence and arcane based archery fortune that has a, a that has sniper like qualities we, we we did a lot of stuff i guess is the point i'm trying to say um without further ado let's simply get started how's everyone doing i hope everyone's having a, a fine day i myself can't complain um i have a couple of things i i want to share with you guys just just to have them on air basically um, and this, this is not it. So, uh, first, actually it is here. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, so the fortune menu, we're on patch. I'm sorry. We are on, uh, app version 1.7. I'm sorry. Yeah. 1.7.01 .01 for Elden Ring. We are in patch 4.6 for Elden Ring Reforged. Elden Ring Reforged um, is a mod package made by Kernifer, a mod author on Nexus, Nexus Mods who only has that mod to their name. Um, it's sort of an ongoing project. That's about as much as I can reasonably say in a short amount of, of time. Um, the fortune menu got a bit of a change. So now, all of our fortunes are separated into three tiers. Our common fortunes are set up here. Our rare fortunes are set up here. Our legendary fortunes are set up here. And yes, the Latena fortune is the legendary fortune. Um, the rest of it's more or less the same. Nothing really too much beyond that. Um, I thought I had muted my phone. Una momento, por favore. That's Italian for one moment, please. It's one of the phrases that sticks out in my mind, and I'm probably butchered it as well. I'm an American, not an Italian, so I don't have the same form emphasis where I should. Um... Second, the thing I, I'm, I'm going to share um, is a game plan. Our game plan, I've already said that we're pretty much going up the eastern side of Liurnia now. That is the plan. However, um, so I want to tell you about the pit stops we're making. We're going to stop by this miner. I think we actually already beat the miner Erd tree here. We're going to take a quick look if we have... Um, then we're just going to move on. We're probably going to spend more of our time in the water than we are otherwise. Here at this uh, rock formation is a dragon. There's a new change um, to this dragon I want to show off. Uh, then after that, here we have another major location. I'll tell you that it has teleporters along with an encampment here-ish. 
then finally we have a few buildings we, before we make it to this spot where I think I think all we did no I take that back it's past this point right here is an NPC uh, that is not the one I want to use okay that, that's about as much as I probably want to reasonably plot out for you right now uh, the rest I do kind of want to divine by divine by doing um, another thing I want to mention just on air is that, uh, I will be changing my stream schedule. I put a treat, a tweet out about this earlier. I believe we did in fact, uh, good. Uh, if I can just, that's uh, that, how do you like that for a roll catch? Um, what was I saying? Right. So I'm the unfortunately not very happy owner of some spare time. And so I will be changing my streaming hours in order to accommodate the new window of time I have. Reshuffling the days around. And I'm going to start testing out the waters for streaming on YouTube. A, to get a, a good idea of what the experience is like. Because it's one thing to talk about it, it's something else to do it. Um, on top of that, I ha do have YouTube projects I want to do, but uh, streaming them is is way easier on me. There's less editing I have I have to do because I'm curating a different experience, right? When you're when you're doing a, a traditional let's play. You have a great deal of editing you got to get done. And not that, not that I mind that. Well, I mean, I wouldn't be saying what I say if I didn't actually mind it. I do, in fact, mind it a little, but... I think it would be a lot easier on me when I don't have an editor. Um, of any kind. And I'm terrible at editing. Let, let's just be honest. I do, like, small snip edits for VODs, and even those I wouldn't call good work. So, it'd be far easier if it were just curated according to a live experience for a live audience. And I think I can reasonably do this on YouTube. I just had to figure out the ins and outs of doing it. That's all. Um... Additionally, in other news, I recently paid for a branding package through a, a team of artists. It's, it's like a whole company, basically. A whole bunch of people uh, come together and do all, all sorts of art for you. It's not a one-person job. So I'm going to be getting new overlay screens, uh, new trans, not a new transition necessarily. I think this, I think I get to, uh, either keep my stingers or I have to find someone else for those. Um, I actually get a appropriate header and not the one that someone crafted for me quite literally six years ago. I mean, that one will always have a, a soft spot in my heart, but... It is probably about time I, uh, upgraded that. Um, and that's not, that, that's a pretty chunky amount. I did spend a good chunky amount of money. I won't mention how much. Um, let's just say it's probably about, uh, somewhere between a third and a fourth of a minimum wage, um, cutting for the month. Uh, or, uh, like, paycheck for the month. And leave it at that. Um. But at, at the end, it, the setup will truly be mine. It won't be something I bought. It won't be something, um, I mean, I suppose it's not mine in the strictest sense. Someone else did draw it, but, um... It, it, it'll it'll have my ownership on it. It won't be something I bought from 
a company. It'll be something I had commissioned. That, that That's a whole different ball game. Really, it is. And I really wouldn't have had access to it if it weren't for my double feature. Uh, the, the double feature was this stream event that occurred on the 23rd of October of 2022, as of the time streaming this. Um, and I, that was a back-to-back, -back, two back-to-back -back streams with a break in between them. Um, each was about three hours, and I met the per I met the group of people that were doing the commission for this, for what I'm talking about. Um, I met them through that. Um, so I, I'm I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that little experiment. Had I not done that, I probably would have kept floundering about with the art I have now, which is fine. If they'll just break these trees for us, that'll be greatly appreciated. Okay, that's interesting, but we also had like water next to us. We're still trying to experiment with this spell and figure out where it's good and, and where it's not. Um, and I do apologize for my apparently somewhat winded nature. Uh, for whatever reason, my throat does feel a tad bit tight. Compared to normal, so I've been I've been piling on the hot tea, but still I do have a little bit more of a tough time talking. Could also be spike protein buildup. Really? Thank you. Um, so. On one hand, my, my academics aren't exactly doing that well. On the other hand, I've had the good fortune of bumping into some stuff related for my stream. So maybe this is a sign of perhaps this is what I should be doing with my life. Perhaps it's a sign of, you know, I just happen to get lucky right now. Or it could just be random coincidence. Don't know. I'm, prop I'm not going to ascribe more providence to what's been going on in my life um, compared to usual, although I do have to get better about dealing with sudden comeuppances in my life as I had to take a nice fat L on a withdrawal this time. That's about as much as I want to say about regarding the matter, really, but I'm not very happy about it. Um, but I figured none of my decisions or none of the things I say would make sense without having somewhat of that context lying around. You can tell when, when you're making headshots because of the damage multiplier. Um, anything that has a discernible head that you can use in order to uh, make headshots, I think has a times 2 or times 1.5 multiplier on the damage. Um, also, there is something to be said for it being raining. I think that's a 10% increase that's tacked on afterwards. Um, when it's raining, folks, just use lightning. You use electricity. It'll make a whole. It'll it'll be rewarding. Let me put it that way.
Um, trying to think. In in Lyurnia, and I suppose I'm kind of, kind of just traipsing to random subjects. So forgive me if I sound a little incoherent. Um, but as we're making this journey throughout Eastern Lyurnia, I want you guys to note the the way everything is spread out. Because in Limgrave, things were very concentrated. Like, yes, you still had cliffs and, and valleys. You had, these, you had this lake and this ravine. Like, there were plenty of places for things to hide. However, the topological sur or the surface area uh, that Lierne or the, that, uh, that Limgrave has is a lot smaller. Even if we don't, uh, even if we were to account for the underground, that's still technically a separate place. Even though it's attached uh, to Limgrave. It is absolutely attached to Limgrave. And Caleb, for that matter. Um, Lyurnia is just a much bigger place. And it has the same... Um, it has the same sorts of cliffs. The same sorts of um, lakes and ravine. It even has a ravine. Like... Looking at all these places on the map, uh, they have the same geological features, the same places for things to hide, but over three times or four times the surface area. It's That's insane. Lyurnia just has more to it, more going on. Um, so I want you guys to make note of how the hiding places differ between um, uh, differ between I'm um, struggling with words again um, between here and Limgrave like just taking all those facts into account uh, and what I'm sort of doing is I'm sticking to the water for the purposes of uh, for the purposes of exploring, and I'm only going on land when I absolutely need to. Not that this isn't land, but just that uh, just that this land has water on. It's part of the the bog or marsh. It does more or less the same amount of damage. It's it's it, it's an interesting spell. A javelin of gold, I feel, is a is a heavy-hitting, ex fairly expensive spell. I think that's where the balance on this is, is that it's expensive to cast. Um, it's not the fastest spell in the world. The projectile is fast, but the casting animation is not. That's the difference. Um, in this particular section of Lyurnia, um, you're going to see a lot of these, uh, land octopuses. These gnarled knots of tentacles and, um, a, a, just a generally writhing amorphous body with egg sacs on it. You're going to see a lot of these. Um, they're very common in this area. Uh, that's pretty much about it. Um, just... They're mixed in with a bunch of their smaller offspring. 
And they do have a good chunk of HP. It seems like I'm making these encounters easy by virtue of being able to exploit their weakness to lightning. But um, that is only because I have the ability to rotate between various FP states and nothing else. Um, this gnarled mass here, this gnarled, I say mass, this bunch of ruined structures here is the temple quarter. Uh, here you're going to see Miranda bloom or Miranda flowers or Miranda sprouts uh, mixed in with some albinorix. And I believe this place does um, have one or two goodies for us. Oh, and watch out for the Albinorix. They have the whole ninja roll from Dark Souls 1 uh, gimmick. Where, like, their rolling animation... Um, their rolling animation um, is a cartwheel. And they're surprisingly nimble for their size. I guess is what I should say. They're fairly nimble for their size. Nice. I love getting more of these. And the Temple Quarter is known for its various, uh... Known for having a lot of enemies in hidden places and really needing to check the building rubble. Um, it is also a spot for three to six guaranteed tr uh, Trina's lilies. So if you were having issues with the um, soporific pots, this would be a, a way to fix that issue for you. Um, these particular uh, Miranda flowers have... Uh, They have the ability to cast these sort of magic-infused magic projectiles. Gotta be careful. They do also still spew out poison, so you do have to mind the, uh... You do have to mind your positioning. We got poisoned earlier. Uh, due to my lack of attentiveness over the same positioning. Um, here is a rest site. I believe this one is new. It's either new or I'm for I'm forgetting. Um, I'm forgetting when I found it. Um, no, I take that back. This isn't new. This is not a new rest site. I've been here before. Um, th get used to this particular one, by the way. As we're going to be schlepping it here a lot. Um, before we deal with what is at that rock mound. And trust me, there is something major at that rock mound. We still need to finish clearing out the temple quarter. We still have things we have to grab. We have Miranda uh, sprouts to slay. And because we'll be making that rest, uh, we should just use our flasks. They were about to do that uh, overheaded, uh, two-handed um, strike. That, most, that a lot of Elden Ring NPCs and enemies are famous for. Where they, they'll do a flip and then they'll smash the uh, weapon they're using at you. That tends to be a two-handed thing more than anything. Um, and the, the Alban Orc would have really closed the gap very fast. Um, just something to bear, bear in mind. The, don't underestimate these small, um, you know, shield-toting um, or club-using Albinoric. It's very easy to do this. 
and you'll rue the day that you let them close the distance, get a hit, and then run away from you, and you'll have lost so much health so fast that you'll wish you were dead. You see what I mean? These things cartwheel. These things do cartwheels. I, I just want to make that clear. These things that are wearing shabby clothes are doing cartwheels. Which is insane. Luckily, the small shield-bearing ones can be staggered rather easily. Um, and Hone Bolt pierces their defense by virtue of striking from above. So if you're you if you're if you are following along with the build that we're doing right now, then uh, you know you should be fine. You have all the tools in your toolbox that you need in order to uh, deal with all the defenses the enemies might have. Um, the only one enemies that'll be a little bit of a trick here are these club users, these giant Albanorix, uh, because they have the same mobility but have twice as much reach on their weapons. And unlike their smaller brethren, these large ones aren't poised out so easily. It, it, these are just things you'll have to pay attention to, and, and that's really what Elden Ring is. It's it's an awareness test. You know, can you find the opportunities to get into your quick strikes and get out? Um, do you have what it takes to manage the, manage the delicate balance between offense and defense? Though I will say, Elden Ring tends to punish you if you get too gutsy with your offense, you kind of need to get your quick hit in and leave. It's very hit and run. I would say that's probably the biggest difference so far between other FromSoft titles and this one, is it still has the Dark Souls pacing for combat, but you're expected to play as though you've had, um, you've dealt with the speed increases of both Sekiro and Bloodborne. Both of those had much faster combat paces. So when you combine an, a clunky, slow, sluggish system like Elden Ring or, or I mean Dark Souls with the fast combat of Bloodborne and Sekiro, what you get is A game that significantly punishes two-handers, that favors dagger builds, and even then, they don't favor offense. You have to get in your hit and get out, and rinse, rinse and repeat. I'm hoping that the next FromSoft title um, addresses, because we shouldn't expect patches. Patches to fix bugs or PvP balancing, fine. Patches that address bosses? No, that's their lifeblood. They're not. You're not gonna get that from them. You have to do something else. You have to find another game or go back to a previous one for better bosses. Uh, and I think that's kind of what they've run into. But that's why we're playing Elden Ring Reforged because with Elden Ring Reforged, we get more tools to deal with Elden Ring's limited boss design, or not that they can't be great, but that the story and build-up just aren't enough. The mechanics need to keep up with the bosses. So, you see that slumbering dragon there? I believe we have some soft cotton. I'm not going to get the key. But I do want to demonstrate 
I do want to demonstrate that you can absolutely sneak up on this dragon. This is Smarag, by the way. Gotta be careful. Can't get too close. I believe we've already run out of the soft cotton effect. So if we were to try to do this without um, without the soft cotton, we would have woken up this dragon. Now, here is where the academy key is, okay? Make a good note of this. Because this is the last time we're going to see it on this corpse. We're going to inspect this corpse after the fact. And the key shouldn't be there anymore. Now, while we're here, while we're sneaking, where Smarag can't get to us, we're going to unveil a command. We've been, I've been doing this pretty much like clockwork, but it's worth doing again. If we, we type in exclamation mark ERRB, um, that'll bring you to the boss spreadsheet. Um, boss spreadsheet has the, has access to ERRs Adjusted boss uh, strengths and weaknesses, or resistances, immunities, and weaknesses. Uh, we're for short. Um, so let's let's find our our dragon, shall we? This would be Glintstone Dragon Smarog. He is a dragon. Okay, so if, if you have any dragon-type weapons, or things that do increase damage against dragons, we will be able to use those to our advantage. Uh, they have 30 defense, 140 poise, so we're not going to be poising them out anytime soon. Not unless you get consistent headshots. Um, for damage types, they take 20% or piercing damage. So, bow users rejoice uh for damage types they resist they are 50 percent resistant to magic so don't even bother bringing your sorceries into this one um no uh dwelling arrows either uh and they're 10 percent resistant to fire so bear, bear in mind our uh flames of frenzy isn't as effective here Lightning and Holy are unresisted. So they, they do their standard damage. So we should be... This is a perfect place to test the power of the Javelin of Gold. Um, for status effects, they are only vulnerable to four of them. They are, they are immune to Death Blight, Sleep, and Madness. They are re resistant... That means they have at least 300 points of uh, status resist. And in the case of ERR, resistant bosses always have 360 points required to apply the status the first time. Poison, Scarlet Rot, Blood Loss, Frostbite. Those four things. That's it. So what is our game plan, you might ask? Our game plan is to apply Poison... Through Poison Mist, bear in mind, Poison Mist isn't going to be as effective as we think it is. Because dragons are a helter-skelter fight. They move all over the place. You'll see what I mean when the fight starts. Um, but they're going to be... We, we, we already saw this with Aguil. Uh, it's just a matter of extending this principle to the other flying dragons that are that moot that are in these various clear areas these wide open spaces basically um so at most we'll get maybe two well i should say two applications we might get a cast a full cast of poison mist um to affect the dragon before we have to run away um and reapply it uh other than that 
The only difference between the Glintstone Dragons and the Flame Dragons is that instead of spitting, they can still spit out fire. The fire is split between magic and, and fire damage. Um, is that um, sometimes they will spit out a uh, home, not a homing, um, not a homing comet or anything like that. But it's something akin to like a comet style magic blast that deals damage. That's really about it. Now, of course, as the as the vocal reminder on camera, when I'm when I'm engaging a boss, I do not talk routinely. Like sometimes something will get my attention. Sometimes there's a notice, but most of the time, uh most of the time, I don't talk. So I will see you guys on the other side of this fight.
So what I wanted you to notice, among other things, was that um, not only did we get a dragon heart available to us, we also got the key after killing him, which is amazing. Does this mess up with speedrunning? Sure. I'd be happy to admit that, yeah, you know, changing it so that if you don't sneak up on the dragon, you don't get the key is, is, is kind of wicked. But people can already sneak up on the dragon. One. Two. It's much easier to do that now. I'm wearing clunky plate and a stone headpiece, and all I needed were two soft cottons or access to that through some other... access to a similar spell. Heck, we could have used darkness um, as an incantation if we really just wanted to sneak up and grab this. I'm actually fine with this change. And I think it's interesting. It's another easy way to tell that you know you're getting the mod. And it's not just, oh, well, I don't see anything besides... You know, FP regenerating. How am I not? How can we be sure that what we're getting is a real overhaul and not just here are a few basic things? Have fun. That key swap is another is another means by which we could uh, say this is a mod. And that was what this marker was here for, by the way. It was uh, out there strictly to denote that I knew where the key was already. What are we going to do now? Well, we're going to head over to this landmass, which should have some floating, um... There might be these floating rat, like, balloon, aerial balloon raft things nearby. Also, if you really needed it for whatever reason... You had these, um... You had these flasks, or these cerulean teardrop scarabs, on standby for you. This is, and this, and this is just base Elden Ring, by the way. They are the only one, or I should say, that is not a change Kernifer implemented themselves. That, that is strictly from the game. They thought already to include... These, these refills for your spells, if you so desired. Which is which is thoughtful boss design. I can, I can appreciate that. It also means you know that the boss is kind of going to be... Uh, where is it? I, where is it? So this particular, uh, these particular kind of scarabs, these particular kind of scarabs have, uh, they're known for teleporting away very quickly. They're very sensitive to sound. You want to kill these? Some of them you could sneak up on and then hit them. Others you need to hit them at range. There's no other way. You got to grab a bow and, or, or a spell and just do it. Most of the time, I would say that you get a you get a stone for your trouble. Um, we did deal with one of these much earlier that gave us access to poison mist, so I it's not true a hundred percent of the time, but most of the time they either have a significant upgrade material or they have, um, or they actually have a spell or a skill, a, an Ash of War inside. What are we going to do now, now that we're done here? Obviously, while I've marked our next locations, um, we do need to go back and uh, check around th specifically this portion of the cliffside before or at, right after the Erd Tree. The minor Erd Tree, I should say.
It is very easy to get careless with these as you advance in skill, so just watch out. Very nice. Yeah, there are a lot of sea creatures in Nirnia. And they're not always on be In fact, is there a beach? There are actually no beaches in Lyernia. It's any sea creatures that you might get are all come from this marsh here. And I would hesitate to call them sea creatures. They're aquatic creatures. They go inside any water-filled environment and can survive and live just fine. Everything... Every sort of sea creature here appears to be amphibian or partially amphibian. Are we being invaded right now? I think we are. This is the Revenger Shack. Okay, I forgot. So, you know how Edgar said he was going to make people pay for killing Arena? Well, apparently this is what happens to you once you start going on a quest for revenge. So, just, uh, you know, don't be vengeful and you will be a fine, fine and dandy individual. Yeah, you cast your incantation, see how far that gets you. Um, he is using a halberd set with a specific uh, special skill or an Ash of War in order to uh, do or use these attacks. Um, he's kind of similar to Vike in that regard, only Vike had a unique skill, and I think this is unique to Edgar's weapon, but Vike's is one of a kind. I believe this skill he's using does appear on other uh, Ash of War uh, weapons or on other weapons. And look, see how e watch how they just struggle to take down, uh, struggle to deal with the poison. Our reward is a Shabriri grape, because of course it would be, and a another plus eight weapon. If you wanted an not an effortless plus eight, but if you wanted an, uh, an okay plus eight weapon, that's a reward for you dealing with um, Arena and Edgar's quest. This, this is the weapon for you. It's a nice piercing slashing weapon with good reach. Um, it covers a wide area and it's the exact, almost the exact copy of the weapon that Edgar was using in fact. And what, what awaits us here? Raw meat dumplings. Maybe this is what caused him to go insane. He actually found the people who um, messed with Irina. Like, had those misbegotten go after her. And once he killed them, he went mad. That would be, that would be a reasonable conclusion. I'm not saying it's established in lore. But it is reasonable headcanon, in my mind. Speaking of which, I think ERR is kind of going through a phase like this right now. On one hand, you have people who don't really mind headcanoning things, especially if they would be fun, flavorful additions um, to the mod. Although it does kind of fly in the face of the mod spirit. And you have another camp of people who are quite purist. And I don't mean that as an insult, I just mean that as an observation of no, we stray too far from the Moz message, let's stay the course, and not use anything that isn't already established in the lore. Characters that we already know about, places we know about, things we know about. We can headcanon those, but characters we only hear about in lore items? Absolutely not.
I respect both approaches. I'm a, I'm personally on the former half of that pool of people, and the stuff I've advoc advocated for has definitely been in that camp of its headcanon. But, um, we need to build up our FP for this next part. Um, I think ERR had about the same growing pains, it is experiencing the same growing pains as uh, Dark Souls 3 Cinders did when I was a part of that Discord. Um, I believe this is a Bloodhound Knight that's here. We're gonna find out. As we step outside this platform. Nope, it is a carrion troll knight. I believe this one, this copy is immune. Nope, never mind. Not immune to status. We should make short work of him, though. Um, Bowles isn't too- is actually a- just a straight-up mini-boss that is an exact copy of, uh... That is pretty much an exact copy of the Troll Knights that you're already seeing. If you wanted practice to deal with one of these, there you go. Bowles is how you would do it. We're just going to kindly... We're just going to kindly, uh... Let the poison take care of the good chunks of this boss. That was really close. I think we have enough to get this started. Right now we have to let this drain. That was a bad, badly timed roll. The relentless attacks. Uh, the when is it my turn crowd is going to be really, really strong strong today, I think. Do we have another one of those? We do not. Thankfully, we still have the, the stats to actually command these spells. Also, I'm kind of being foolish right now. Um, where on earth... I have to be really careful. Oh. Reformed, huh? That's fine. You can do that. Um, I'm going to try a different structure for the ads. Uh... Well, not a different structure for the ads themselves, let's say, but a different structure for 
the intermissions. Normally we do one of those. Um, and they're typically in the camp of... They're typically in the camp of 10 minutes. What we're going to do now is since the Everjails specifically only trigger during... Um, specifically only trigger their boss fights once you step out the platform, I'm going to take a smaller 5 minute break during which time I'm going to play an ad. Feel free to get a stretch break, get a drink, uh, you know, hug your loved one, etc, etc. And we'll be back after this short break. I am back. Sorry about that. Um, it'll take me a few streams to get used to that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, round two. Let's do this.
Oh, really? we go. Get him to stagger. And then we just uh, pepper him with Flame of Frenzy. Good stuff. And our reward was the next evolution in Carrion Phalanx spells, the Great Blade Phalanx. That spell is more expensive and produces three much larger uh, Carrion Great Blades um, that in most manners behave exactly as uh, Carrion Phalanx, except that they deal more damage, generally have more poise damage, um, more of a hit stagger effect if they do get the stagger off. Um, it's good stuff. Let's see. We have the big bats and the singing bats. The singing bats are more dangerous, as a reminder. They also tend to have bigger rune rewards as well. And if a nearby bat dies, well, you can at least get them to stop singing. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I like their song for the short few seconds that it doesn't repeat on itself. Hearing it 10,000 times is annoying. Three jogs, and they're dead. Three jogs with our hand between our hands and our spells, and they're dead. I love jogging. <laughs> I love jogging people. I, that's gotta. That's gotta stick. Javelin of gold. Jog. Jogging someone. Spamming javelin of gold at them. That that's gotta be good. There's an internal meme somewhere, and I'm going to find it. Ah, yes. And look. Lobster territory. You really don't want to be crossing this alleyway. Um, unless you're just... Or this... I'm sorry, this passage through the lake. If you're not confident that you can take on these lobsters. Because, boy, are there a lot of them. Um... We're approaching the teleporter location I had mentioned. Um, before that, though, I do need to take a really quick 30 seconds. I've got to blow my nose. It's itching like crazy. I might find it stupidly hard to concentrate. I will be right back, um, and I'm going to play an ad for that small amount of time as well. Una momento, per favore. Sorry about that. Uh, 
I had to go take care of it. It was driving me insane. Anyone else ever... You know, if you ever get, like, a, a stuffy nose or a, a runny nose, and it just never stops, or once it's, once you've, like, dried out, um, you know, stuff becomes loose. Yeah, that, that's what I was more or less handling. I didn't, I don't have a stuffy or a runny nose or anything, but I had, I had to go deal with loose material. And that's about as much as I'm going to say on that matter. Um, this hill here has a couple of phantom um, troll knights that we'll need to watch out for. Them. The phantom troll knights um, have all the same... We, we actually already encountered one of these uh, back over here through this corridor. There's a phantom troll knight here. Um, and they have all the same annoyances, all the same bells and whistles that you would ask for. Thankfully, though, I think jogging them is going to melt them like butter. It does take two casts. It is expensive. So at some point, we will have to rotate out generators if we don't want to run ourselves dry. And that sort... Ah, yes. Yeah, see? Here we are. And I, I'm, I am, in fact, calling them phantoms because they have these white appearances. And they'll teleport around just like mausoleum knights do. They also lack a head, which means A, that troll is passed on. But B, um, there's no staggering them with headshots. Um, also, they'll teleport around. And they're a bit... They're also hardier than their cousins as well. They're really difficult to deal with. I don't shame people for running past these. Especially in base Elden Ring. And in general, you just can't damage them as much uh, as you would some of these others. You're stuck playing their game on their terms, with their rules. You can only attack when they tell you to. There's the first one. There's the second one. And there's the third one. And I believe there are two or three of them in this place. Just on the way up through the, um, on the way up through the hillside. You have quite a few. I think one also spawns behind you as you're moving up through the hills as well. Um, don't quote me on that. Oh, well, see, here's the second one. Also roaming the hillside. And this is on the way toward the, um, army camp that's there. I don't think you can drive them mad either. I'm fairly sure these are weak, uh, immune to all. Oh, never mind. You can drive them mad. Good to know. Thank you for your custom. These became a lot easier to deal with, especially now that Flame of Frenzy is more accurate. Oh, and I suppose the one rude thing I didn't do t that I haven't... I'm being rude by having forgotten to tell you about the patch notes. Um, there really isn't much. The only thing that was uh, changed is the HP of a spoiler boss for Questline and making it 1.07.1 compatible. 
Um, that's the Elden Ring calibration version is 1.07.1. Um, other than that, patch 4.6 really didn't add, add or subtract anything. It is mostly a compatibility patch. That's it. Anything else, anything else is, is extra. We aren't quite ready to go toward that encampment yet, so we will be turning back around and going up the hill. Uh, I believe there should be just one more phantom carrion knight, troll knight. Carrion? One more troll, phantom troll knight. Good lord. Uh, I cannot talk. And he should be... Yep, he p puffs into existence. Here he is. You'll fall like the rest of them. Thank you for your custom. So I don't need this. I don't need this active right now. And here we are. I avoided alluding to this place by name, but um, we are at the four belfries. The four belf belfries contain three portals. One is ch to the Church of Anticipation. And if you're wondering why we haven't heard about this place right now, it is because we've technically been there, but there's no rest site for it. Um, so there's no way to know what it is, but th it, this is the Church of Anticipation. If you remember that grafted scion we fought earlier, uh, that is what is sitting there. Um, each of these portals uh, don't work through the usual stone sword keys. You need an imbued stone key or an imbued sword key. Crumbling lands. Yes, so this this one here, the very first one uh, at the bottom, takes you to um, a late game area called the Crumbling Lands of Faramazula. Um, and we won't be touching that for a long, long, long time. Because once, and I mean, the Crumbling Lands are an end game area. These could this 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 entrance contains the last seven bosses in the game. Last seven. Um so if we're going here, we're about ready to progress through new game plus. Or progress on to new game plus. This one here is the precipice of anticipation. Which is the where the Church of Anticipation is. This one up top. No, I'm sorry. There's there's another one. Um, I believe it's this one off to the right. Night sky unceasing. That'll take us underground. Um, this one is the most minor of the three portals. Um. However, we don't need to touch that one for a long time. A very long time. Um, not as long as the one for the crump, the lands of... I'm sorry, the crumbling lands of Fair Missoula, but uh, still a relatively long time. We're probably going to be in um, Kaled or Altus before we touch that middle one. And the last belfry up here... It doesn't actually contain a portal, although I th I want to be very careful about that. I want to say there was like there was something like beta or alpha where there was a portal there, but I I don't remember. It's worth looking into later for discussion purposes. Uh, we have 
we have an obligatory um, rest site up here, which we are going to use. We're going to level up because we sorely need it. Your thoughts, your ambitions. We need a little more health. We need around 20 or so. Yeah, more vigor helps. Some people can't handle 20, and, and that's fine. If you need 30 vigor, you need 25 vigor for Lyernia slash Kaelid, you get that vigor. You do it. And don't let us stop you. But we don't... For the amount of experience I have at from soft titles, um, I can make do with 20. I believe this one is... Yeah, it's this one off to the right here. This is the, the stone sword key we want to use. Let's just make sure we're dealing with the right one. We are. And don't use your stone sword key or your imbued sword key on the one for the crumbling lands of, of Fair Missoula and actually use that portal. It'll cause a whole bunch of quest triggers to go off. So don't do that being honest. Alright, let's travel to a... let's travel back to where it all began. The Church of Anticipation. We have a few things we need to collect here anyway. A uh, quest item and a boss. The Chapel of... why did I call it the Church? It's the Chapel of Anticipation. You can't... Uh, you cannot summon here. You cannot ride here. It's just a very few basic things. If you want your first glimpse at nascent butterflies and you've not been underground yet, this is the first place you'll find them. There are only a few. Um, there aren't really any chests apart from what you missed back in the initial area as well. So, the boss. The boss that's here is the Grafted Scion, which has the defenses you'd expect. 15 defense, 75 poise. They can be staggered easily. They are vulnerable. They are 10% vulnerable to slash damage. Um, they take 5% less piercing damage. Their physical defenses are irrelevant, basically. Uh, for resistances, for damage resistances, magic, they are 5% weak to that. They're 15% weak to Lightning and 10% weak to Holy. Oh good, we're packing all of those except Magic. Um, they take normal amounts of fire damage. We'll be well served. For resi like status resistances, they are vulnerable uh, to Blood Loss, Sleep, and Frostbite. And they have the normal amount of resistance for... Poison, Scarlet Rot, uh, Death Blight, and Madness. So we're going to be inflicting a ton of status. The trade-off here is, I suppose, the Grafted Scion might not give us much of an opportunity to do that. Um, we really do need more Sanctuary Stones. I need to be grinding those up off-camera. So, even though this is technically a field enemy... Disguised as a, as a boss, I still don't talk about talk during these, although I, I'm a little more fast and loose with them. Now, I will say, once I start doing ch uh, challenge runs of this thing, if I'm allowed to do so, um, you know, I'm not going to be talking at all during these. Like, at all at all. Um, so I'm, I'm getting into the habit of that now. I'll see you guys on the other side of this fight. All right, sunny boy, show me you mean business.
Um, these things should be easy, but they're not. I, for whatever reason, either there was a height advantage to where the guarding hitbox wasn't allowed, or I just got my inputs eight by this thing. Oh well, you know, we just gotta make that right of shame and do it again. The sad part is, is that this is probably a really easy boss, I mean, completely honest with you. It's the first boss. Many people are able to come back and curb stomp it. I will say a grafted scion does have altered stats, so it's not it, it's not exactly as easy as you remember it being. But in my defense, I'm not exactly using a playstyle that is well suited. You're far better off using magma sorceries on this thing than you are to actually uh, kill it through no kill it through status. We can do it. It is rough. And we don't really need the poison until later. So we're going to avoid the poison. And simply enjoy a 5% bonus. And hopefully not get clipped on future attacks. Yeah, these things have some deceptive reach too. Don't let the videos fool you. The videos make it look super easy. You still have to pay attention. This particular Grafted Scion should be approaching Phase 2 now. I think they, they're they going to get some holy damage on their attacks. Yep, here it is. Yeah, look, another one of those. If we take two hits, we're dead. Oh, and yeah, they will reapply that buff if they run out for any particular reason. I 
think I'm willing to let poison kill you. That's right, breathe it in. Lovely jogging finish. And our reward is, well, okay, it's kind of middling. 12, 12k runes is not the best, but it could hardly be considered the worst. Hmm? Um, more importantly, we get an ornamental straight sword, I think. We have the ornamental straight sword, um, which will buff... Spirit swordsman will prefer to wield one in each hand. I believe the ornamental... Yeah. So the ornamental straight swords... Can be wielded in a pair. Which is pretty freaking cool. Um... You can also wield it by itself. Both approaches are fine. Absolutely fine. Perfectly fine. Um, I don't know if I'd use it. I would only use it if I were going for a look. I think other straight swords have it beat in various different types of departments. Some on damage, some on movesets, um, some on status inflicting effects, such as the Sword of St. Trina, of course. Uh, one of my, probably my favorite swords. I really do how, like how it looks. It's a bit creepy, but I do like it. It's a, it's a very elegant aesthetic. Um, so one thing you should know that has been changed about the Chapel of Anticipation is that the chapel, um has some functions to it now. It's not just, oh, I come back here, I get the item, we're good. Um, if you want to progress early to a, a new game plus, you can immediately advance to it. Like if we if we uh, examine the statue, we can, we can immediately advance. I'm not going to, but that's how you could do it. Also, the Chapel of Anticipation is how you'll access the bonus game modes of Elden Ring Reforged, of which there are at least two, that with more probably on their way at some point. Um, we'll go over those when we're ready to tackle getting to the Chapel of Anticipation and, and accessing these game modes, but um, the more important catch, the more important find that we need here is to come over here to this door which is now open okay um we're gonna head up these steps and collect this the stormhawk king we should read this we're only gonna get to see these ashes once this playthrough or it could have issues It, this is where we get our spirit summon ashes, right? Is it a key item? It might be. That's really weird. Hmm. Okay, well, I can tell you the Stormhawk King is, uh, you can keep it for yourself at, in base game. I think that ability has been removed 
in um, Elden Ring Reforged, or I'm just not seeing where it is. Let me give it one more look. Yep, sure enough, it's just not there. Okay, it's here. It's a key item. Okay. Ashes of a hawk, which heeds no summon. So, you cannot use the summon. You cannot, you cannot summon this. There's a specific person this is intended for. Which, of which we will talk about. Of whom we will return to in just a moment. Ashes of a hawk, revered by all others as sovereign back in the day when Stormvale's winds still raged like no other. This ancient monarch is proud, however, refusing to answer anyone's summons. Good to know. Now, what's in the chest? I believe this is a real... Yep, yeah, Stormhawk Dean. So, Stormhawk Dean is actually here. Um, used to summon the spirit of Dean the Stormhawk. Spirit of a fierce hawk that faithfully rendered lifelong service to the old king of Stormvale long ago. Um, when the true storm raged, its cries emboldened its fellows in battle, and the tempestuous winds that encircle it shred through foes. Um, I haven't used this spirit summon before, so I, I hesitate at calling it good or bad. I'll let you be the judge of that. What I will say is that it's at least interesting, and we've fought the Stormhawks before. So, uh, one thing you'll probably notice about the Spirit Summons is that they tend to use... Uh, they tend to be modeled after various enemies, as they're phantom copies of various enemies in Elden Ring. Um, and use their AI with different stats and stuff. So... If you don't mind the Stormhawk AI, it's probably a fine spirit, spirit Ash. Also, anything that has like a stomp or a sweep that only hit, goes low to the ground will probably help um, sell the, storm, uh, the Stormhawk in your favor. I don't know if I'll use it. I have ones I like more, but um, maybe as we continue playing through Elden Ring Reforged, we will, in fact, um, be able, or we will, in fact, explore some of these other spirit ashes. And make sure they're upgraded before we make comparisons, as we'll have plus ten ashes by the end of all this. We can't, um, we can't make comparisons on one, level ones or plus ones versus level tens or plus tens. Like, fully upgraded stuff. Alright, now... We have a certain person we need to talk to regarding our lovely, lovely spirit summon. Now, uh, do you remember, do you guys remember how we were talking to Nefeli Lou, and she was distraught, and we didn't really know what to do. She didn't know what to do. Let's try giving her this Stormhawk. For whatever reason, it really seems like maybe her people um, were long ago, w w held that spot long ago, and Stormvale went by a very different shape, a very different place. A very different appearance as it does now. Maybe her garb is in reference to this. No. How could I say the father has... And now... Is that ash? I can smell the ancient storm in it. My thanks. I'll gladly take it. I'm... Not like Broderica. I don't feel the presence of spirits. Let alone see them. Still. This ash... It reminds me of my first hawk. Thank you. In this ash, it reminds me of my... Well, that's about all we're gonna get out of that, huh? Well, hey, we got the ash out of our hands. We're free to do something else. Do you have any news for us, Fia? I am pleased to see what you like.
I'll always take your hugs, Fia. They're well-meaning, well-intentioned hugs. Even if they do suck the life out of you. End of day. Nope. Just nothing. I check her. I check with her every so I have to be very careful with my wording. Uh, I check in with her every so often just to make sure I don't miss the exact quest trigger. Uh, the, the portion of her quest that we'll be dealing with later. Um, however, I don't want to keep the Baldekin's blessing um, on me either. Um, for those who aren't aware, uh, or just haven't played through Elden Ring yet, um, Baldekin's blessing saps 5% of your maximum health while it is in your inventory. Um, so if you're if you struggle with health and you've got and you've hugged Fia recently check your inventory make sure you don't have a blessing on you if you do like you can you might be able to make use of it it does give you something to the tune of like a hundred and some odd poise it's a good buff I, I'm just not sure that poise is worth the health cost Mm. Oh, sorry about that. I'm, you can kind of tell I'm, I'm frazzled a bit, but we'll make it through this. Um, now, we were up here. We don't really need or want to go up here. We need to be back at the foot of the four belfries so we can continue on our journey. Um, if I knew if... Um, the statue was a binding decision. If I knew it was a binding decision, I would be able to tell you, yay, we're going to explore it, or no, we're not. I'll have to ask uh, Kernifer or someone who's interacted with it in some way. Um, I'll tell you a bit more about what it does. Just know that it'll be a while before we get it. So, that statue that lets you go to New Game Plus early... There are several things about it that are unique. One, it will auto-advance your stats. You will get a number of free level-ups um, when you do this, so that you're at the same power level. Incidentally, all of the uh, areas get scaling um, based on the highest scaling present in the game, which... Kernifer's put together a lovely resource, but it's not available for linking yet. So have to be very careful. Hang on, I gotta type something. So, I'm still not very used to my name change yet, folks. Uh, I've been doing this a lot, where I've been posting as Coinstamp180 on, like, the discords that I, I'm, I'm part of. And uh, I don't have that number in my name anymore. <laughs> so, because I don't have that number in my name... I've probably been giving everyone an errant Twitch link, huh? <laughs> I really do apologize about that. I'll correct that for future submissions. I'm not going to, uh... I'm not going to, uh, bombard people with an actually accurate, um, Twitch notification right now. I, I really will have to fix this for later, though. Uh, I, I'm getting, I'm getting used to the, the new technicalities that come with my name change. So forgive me if I, if I've, uh, not lived up to the hyper expectation yet. Let's 
there any other notices I should be aware of? Okay. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, it's really important that I, I pay attention to not just, you know, chat, but also um, pay attention to Discord and some other stuff as well. Uh, mainly because sometimes I'll get a notice like that where people are communicating to me via a meeting. And that has burned me a number of times. Uh, uh, glintstone pebbles. Yeah, extremely accurate glintstone pebbles. Ooh, nasty. Okay. And the hit stun, if you're not on your game, will practically guarantee you for another one of these. And if you think keeping your guard up is going to help you, I've got news for you. It doesn't. Yeah, that's one nice thing about our toolkit. Is that if we're having problems with a bunch of shield users, we can easily fix it. We can very easily fix it. Free rune arc for our troubles. I'll never say no to those. And yeah, we have to be very, very careful. I keep saying that a lot. So I should probably just stop saying it. Caution really is the name of the game, however. Now, if we had, let's say, if we had the fortune of Latena, we might be able uh, to do something about that archer, but the fact of the matter is we just kind of can't right now. And we'll go over that sh uh, jellyfish shield we got in just a moment. I want to be very, very, very careful with my next few moves. All right. Um, now that we have a split second to breathe, I'm going to take a look at this shield. It is a great shield, not just any kind of shield. Uh, the head of a spirit jellyfish, commonly found floating above sacred ground throughout the lands between, wielded without modification as a shield. The see-through head is extremely light, but its flesh is supple, providing absolutely no protection from piercing attacks. Uh, unique skill, contagion, Contagious Fury. Incite the jellyfish's wrath and allow its fury to flow through you. Raises attack power for a certain duration. Um, so that is, that is something we could make use of. However, we still don't have the stats to actually use this. We're missing strength, which granted, um, I believe our fortune... Um, I want to say the fortune of the wizard doesn't sap... Yeah, the two fortunes we normally use don't sap our, uh... Don't sap our physical stats. That being said, we still don't have a whole bunch of strength to begin with. Come on, big guy. Um, Poison Mist or other similar spells work really well for dealing with pumpkin heads. Um, mainly because... Oh, I need to be very careful. Um, mainly because that pumpkin helmet of theirs 
um, decreases headshot damage or any damage aimed in that area by 75 or 50 percent it's something like that um, it's it's a very crazy amount of damage look even honed um, even honed bolt doesn't help us uh, deal with that we actually need them to be standing up We need them to be standing up um, or bent completely over and us at the side in order to make room, in order to deal the damage we're supposed to for these attacks. Sorry was just making sure that it wasn't important. My phone was vibrating a lot. Sometimes it means it's it's updating with all the missed text messages. Uh, and you are going to hold up your shield. This, this is fine. It's just too bad the Hone Bolt does not poise them out. They will poise out these if you let them know. And thank goodness that it does. I love this spell. Um, I think there's a, uh, Discord user named Broballs? Bruh Balls? B, all lowercase, B R U H. Oh, hi there. Um, B-R-U-H-B-A-L-L-S. I think he comes up with... He, they, I don't know who they are yet. Um, uh, they come up with a bunch of the um, spell effect swaps. Sometimes it's Kernifer, though. Um, I, I don't know for certain, and I don't know if I really have have good authority to ask that type of question but i know that kernifer does get outside help on gra on graphical for on graphical overhauls for anything in the game um sometimes i know sometimes ivy also helps out with that um there's a couple of other people that sometimes contribute in terms of um, you know, graphical sound effects or just anything visual in general. Because Kernifer usually handle, handles the coding aspects very well. One nice thing is that they will just sit there and guard it. The Cuckoo Knights are actually very scary. They're very scary um, enemies to fight, mainly because of the fact that... Um, oh, is this something here? Oh, I think it's just a skull. It is. Um, oftentimes when you're fighting them, especially if you're a caster, it's very frustrating to deal with their shields... Um, they have a lot of stability. It's hard to break their guard. Um, you're often just better off getting in close and hitting them with a distance spell or something. It's usually not worth your time, um, to fight them with their shields up right, up like that. Mainly because Hone Bolt also takes resources in base, in base Elden Ring and... Um, you're kind of stuck in animation until you're done. Um, but with Elden Ring Reforged, they're more like a middling enemy. They can be scary. Like, it depends on your spell loadout. They can be scary. But if, if you keep your wits about you, and you take things one at a time, um... And you're not fighting um, that knight 
alongside anything else that's moving around. Um, it's not too bad. You just had to time your spell casts correctly. Um, so like when they're buffing their weapon is a great time to cast spells. Um, if they're charging at you and they run past because you've dodged through them, um, that is another time that is it that's really good for casting spells. Is that was there something interactable there? I saw an input and I just didn't pay attention to it. I guess I'll never know now. Because the object's broken. Um. What am I what am I trying to say? Um yeah, the, the Cuckoo Knights aren't... They're a good test of your skills as an as an enemy. They really are. Um, they, their attacks can kind of feel relentless. Um, especially if you're, like, still kind of figuring the game out for yourself. Oh, hi. I know which kind of, kind of attack I want to be using. Yeah, I guess a bunch of... Sometimes there will be ambush points in um, Elden Ring. This is one of them. A bunch of wraiths will come in behind you. Um, thankfully, our Javelin of Gold makes that encounter turn from annoying to meh, whatever. I don't know. I feel like the spell is slightly overtuned. Then again... I also got it early. So what does that say? Is it overtuned because I got it early? Or I'm sorry, is it overtuned overall? Or is it simply, you know, having more punch for the level than I expect because I got it early at a time where it wasn't intended to get it? Knights on horseback aren't too difficult. In fact, the fact that their um, horse more easily staggers makes it an makes it a a better. Um, you just have to watch the horseback attacks, I suppose. Some of them are quite nasty, and they have pretty good range on them as well. Um, that being said. Uh, as long as you keep your eye trained on both of them, which lock on camera is, isn't bad for, for adjusting, um, adjusting to their position. Like the lock on camera does a pretty good job of managing it. You just have to, you can't rely exclusively on the camera. Gotta use your eyeballs sometimes after all. Um... That's about all, all I have to say. As long as you use your eyeballs, you're fine. So, how is everyone holding up so far? Is everyone holding up all right? I'd love to take a break right about now. Um, we're overdue. We're, we're kind of due for an intermission break. But now is just not a good time. Um, we've got a lot going on around us. And look at how easily this thing dispatches with crowds. This is a seriously good spell. Um, it just checks so many of the boxes that we're trying to deal with 
as a caster. It's great at dispersing crowds. It has high damage. Enemies aren't super resistant to it. I'm not going to attempt to keep my distance. This is a better incantation for dealing with them. And even though our damage is weakened, it's still... It, it, like, the weather effects are something you should be mindful of, but they're not necessarily something you should bend over backwards to try to accommodate for. If the situation just ain't gonna accommodate the incantation, don't use it. Also, this here contains the Carrion Knight Sword. It's another straight sword, ironically enough. Has Carrion Grandeur on it. Um, Carrion Grandeur is a skill, is a Ash of War that turns your sword into a two-handed overhead magical attack. It's a, it's kind of strong. Kind of. Oh, can't do that. We're just gonna sit here and build up poison on these two. This, this is going to be hilarious. I don't mind doing this. I don't think it deals enough poise damage either. It technically does something, but it's not, uh... It's not, um... It's not anything close to significant. I hear something else in the background, though. Oh, I think it's something small. Anyone else ever do this? They just apply a status and then kind of sit there and watch it do its work. This is like some of my favorite things to do, by the way. When I'm playing this offline, I love applying status. I'll, I will literally go trape somewhere else. Not far enough away for the status effect not to continue ticking. But just far enough away that um, the enemy unlocks its aggro from me. It's a it, it's a fun pastime. It's very relaxing. And you can tell we're not in combat with them either. We're not in combat. Well, okay, we're in combat with them now. We're just going to stay out of sight. Fun times to be had all around. I, I rarely do this on camera because it's kind of, um, it, it lacks action, I guess is what I should say. Uh, it lacks action, but it's very fun to, to know that you can pull this off. Yeah, it's, it's very fun to tr try to pull that off. Just, you know, cheese them entirely through status. At least in my opinion. Okay. This has some pretty good range on it. Yeah, don't forget to occasionally go back go back and resurface at these lakes. Like uh, go and um get back on them. And uh pop these balloons that appear. All, pretty much most of these will always drop a, uh, um, I believe it is a tier 5 rune or a 2,000 value rune. Which is really quite good, all things considered. 
And, you know, going through the motions of killing these will always net you a flask as well. It is, it's, um, it, it's hard to complain, um, for killing these, especially if you can just take out the, um, marionette soldiers without much fuss. Granted, if you can't do that, it gets a little bit worse. Yeah, if you can't do that, it does get a little bit worse. However, you know, I know that hit the, um, that hit that dragonfly, but I didn't get FP for it. Very weird. This spell is so good. Yeah, this almost makes, this probably does make Paladin a very worthwhile fortune. And it's nice being able to get the jump on these. I do remember, you know, being a, a um, sorcerer or astrologer back in the day. That's just the class designation for the initial stat loadout. I do remember being that one of those back in the day, casting a sorcery at it, and then having to deal with the mirth of unfortunate side effects of letting down a whole bunch of archers and stuff. Um, as much as I want to keep prancing around, we do have the matter of uh, this, this specific tower to deal with. I believe you do get a memory stone for unlocking it. And like most of the memory towers, um, the ones that aren't attached to the beginning of the game, that being the Weeping Peninsula and, um, no, I think even Weeping Peninsula has one of these where you got to find the three spirit animals to unlock it. Shall I turn? Let my hand share them with me. Okay, we're going to bump that at 20 and we should be good. Um... Yeah, it has these spirit animals you gotta find. Um, so what I'm gonna do, just to make sure I don't waste anyone's time, is look at the location of the spirit animals during our next intermission. This one might be slightly longer than five minutes, by the way. I'm also gonna try and eat something while I'm on break. Um, thank you guys so much so for supporting me so far. Really appreciate it. Um... I'll shill a little bit more once I get back. But in enjoy your intermission in the meantime, and I will see you guys afterwards. <laughs>
I do apologize about this, but I am going to be out a little bit longer than I had anticipated. Maybe about another five-ish minutes or so. Um, I will be right back. Uh, I'm going to roll an ad in the meantime. You won't be missing anything. Promise. Sorry. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I am back. So, how's everyone doing? Hopefully good. I'm alright. I do apologize about the break. I think I've said that twice already. 
but I really do mean it. I'm in, and when I'm emphatic, I'm usually trying to be really sincere. Promise. Um. So shilling. If you guys like to, if you guys want to support this content for free, don't have to pay anything. Free is always nice. Um, leave me a follow on Twitch. Let's me know you like it, and I can continue doing it. Um, please also hit the notification bell so that you don't miss it, miss when I go live. Um, and you might want to make sure you actually press the button um, rather than just click on it, because what um, Twitch tends to do is kind of similar to YouTube. Um, it'll set your notifications to personalized, or um, they'll go off, they'll go to sleep after a while. So if you don't want that happening to you, or you really don't want to miss out on content, uh, I highly suggest that you make sure that the all setting is turned on, as opposed to personalized or something along those lines. Um, if you want to get in touch with me more directly, best ways to do that are through Twitter, mainly Twitter. I take a lot of not a lot, but it takes, I take direct messages through there. Um, I also have a community Discord that's in the About Me page on, um, that is in the About Me page on Twitch. It's the Obted Network Discord. I share that with a number of other content creators. So the space isn't exclusively mine, per se. But I do have a Discord if you want to talk at me or, you know, be able to shoot me a friend request or something. I usually respond to those. I am considering making a return to Discord servers, but in a different form than they are now. And that and that is just for a matter of A, my own safety, and B, I kind of want it to mean something. And not just, oh, well, everyone has one. No, I, I want this to be something significant. Um, other than that, if you want to support the content directly of course that is never required <clears throat> financial support is never required um, I do this for free I do it as a hobby um, even though I'm an affiliate I do this as a hobby but if you do want to support me directly I have three main methods of sending donations you can also leave your bits bits or tips here as well um, Donating to me can be done through either Stream Elements or um, I think PayPal also has alerts wired to it. Don't quote me on that second one. Um, so if you want like flashy recognition, then um, you know since use those two things. If in fact you would you would be like, oh, I I, I don't mind giving you direct donations, but. You know, maybe I don't want the fanfare. I just want to have a nice, quiet time. You can actually do that. I have uh, my coffee page set up for that stuff. Um, you just put in inter intervals of two U.S. dollars or less, um, and it makes no noise. It's perfect if you want to lurk. I try to be lurker-friendly as much as I can, and that is a hard thing to do. Because typically, as an entertainer, you want to be flashy. You want to talk to everyone. Um, but I realize that, that the lurking community is a very, very, very important thing on Twitch. Um, it's It makes up a lot of a streamer's audience, if I'm being completely honest. People need to wash the dishes. People need to, uh, you know, people need to be productive at work. And they need something to listen to that isn't dead silence or machines clacking off at work. I get it. And they don't want to alert their boss or, you know, they've been told they can have these things in the background. They just can't make any noise or they can't, you can't be watching them at work. I gotcha. Uh, at least I try to think I have you covered. Um, and of course, I'm always thankful to anyone who tunes in to any portion of this at all. Um, suppose it's probably worth putting it back on the live section now. Um, so, a preview of things to come. So first, the tower that we are at is called Tetsu's Rise. T 
Tetsu's Rise, much like, um, let me find it, Oridus, Oridus's Rise, has these spirit turtles that we need to find. Three of them. Um, what do we do after that? Well, once we find the three spirit turtles, we the seal on the tower should open up, and we'll be allowed in. Now, we will have phantom skeletons chasing after us. They will they they can die, but they never truly go away. They always respawn. So it's just better if you focus on the three turtles, because then they'll disappear afterwards. After Ordis's rise, we're gonna go we're gonna path through here back to the lake shore and go explore all these buildings. And then we'll meet an NPC here as well. Uh, one that I've been dying to show you guys. Um, after that we will probably not we'll, we'll go as far as these cliff sides over here there are things there uh however we still have the central portion of the academy to explore there are a few things we need to do before we head in here because once we head in here uh we're gonna be up here for a couple of episodes so if we want to do anything else we need to do it beforehand um, and that's really about as much as I have to say. Um, why don't we get back to it? So, Tetsu's Rise is like the next step up in terms of the challenge of finding the spirit animals. Um, and I suppose for those who are interested in knowing, um, while well, I had to take that short five minutes, five extra minutes, I did have to place, um, a couple of orders a local couple uh, a couple of local grocery orders um i also had to check messages and make sure i didn't receive any communications from my sibling or from my um my dad just make sure that there was nothing going on so i do apologize for that i promise i wasn't just skirting around seeing you guys or anything like that i love talking to you i love talking to you guys you guys almost always have something interesting to say. Um, we always end up chatting it away about uh, geopolitics or philosophy or other things. We, we almost always have in interesting discussions, and I'm really thankful for that. First turtle over here up on the cliff. Second turtle, a little bit trickier to find. Um, it's actually up here. And the third turtle is down on a... Down on a lower portion of the island. Let's see if I can spot it. Ah, yes, it's right there. This is probably the fastest I've, I've found these, by the way. And if you heard all those chimes that sounded like they were up above us, they were. Those skeletons were despawning. Um, but like I was saying before, I do like talking to you guys. Um, I haven't really had a conversation that has approached into truly egregious territory. At most, we've started talking about human anatomy or crime. Or, you know, the darker sides of geopolitics. But even then, people have been nothing but respectful. Um, and the people that have been disrespectful, disrespectful have been banned. <laughs> so, you know, the usual streamer response. Yes, I take, I take Terms of Service very seriously on, on Twitch. I do not allow, uh flagrant ableism, uh, racism, sexism, or anything else for that matter. I've been a victim of ableism. I may not look like it because I look all posh and, and well-dressed, but, you know, I'm, I think I've said it on stream before. I'm not a neurotypical individual. I'm a neurodivergent individual. I do, I struggle with things sometimes. I've had people bully me my whole life. 
Uh, I guess with except within like the past six years, people really haven't done any of that. Then again, part of it might be because, I don't know, I dress like I'm someone important. I talk like I'm someone important. I present myself as though I hold some weight. I don't hold any, but, you know, if people think I hold some weight, that's a good enough deterrence mechanism for me. Although, woe betide me to the person who... Woe betide me if I find an individual who doesn't care about the appearance. Hmm? I don't go impersonating anyone. I don't say, oh, I work for the FBI. I don't. I don't say, oh, I, I work as an ant, like a major corporation executive. I don't. I just talk. I just talk if I'm spoken to, and I don't if I'm not. I make sure I use proper diction, good grammar, good syntax, and a decent, but most of the time not overly pontificating or voluminous vocabulary. Uh, you know, current example notwithstanding. Wasn't always like that as a kid. I did have a very good grasp on words back then. Still do now, but I'm older now. I'm 30. I'm, uh, I'm not the spry 23, 24-year-old I used to be. Um, I've experienced things. I've also got brain fog. So I, I don't I don't word things as good as I used to, but I still got the chops. <clears throat> I ain't as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was. Ten points to anyone who gets the song reference. So now that we're here, we're going to go through these buildings. Now, these buildings have a gimmick. The gimmick is that there are invisible casters, invisible aristocrats that are here. And they make life difficult. Because we can't actually lock on with our camera, except if we're really close to them. There's, there's nothing we can do about this either. In a situation like this, um, this would probably be one of the times where I would actually recommend um, Litany of Proper Death, because Litany of Proper Death, uh, they will always appear, and uh, they will always appear somewhere where they can actually shoot you. Perfect. Oh, and they're devious too. They'll hit you when you're talking to someone. Ah, E.G., forgive me. These royal grounds were placed in our trust, but we stood no chance. Against what? I don't know, say maybe some black knife assassins? That might be a good... Oh, I forgot. The other gimmick. The other gimmick of this is that there will be these traps, uh, sort of placed, uh, placed throughout the buildings, the ruins, and, uh, you have to, oh god, careful. Um, and you kind of have to mine their positioning a good deal of the time. Hey there, Alex. Welcome back. Good to see ya. How are you doing? Hope you enjoy your stay. Um, hopefully everything in your life is going as you would expect or want it to. Now, where did that nefarious caster get to? I have to pay attention to an audio cue here. And not let them get away from ya. These guys do love turning invisible. A lot. Change your hairstyle, or is the lighting different? Um... Uh, I have it, I have it combed back, if that's what you're talking about. I do have long enough hair to do that. 
Um, but the lighting is also a bit different. Actually, the lighting is a bit overbearing now that I look at it. Hang on a moment. That should be better. Um, not quite as overbearing on my face. Oh, hi there, big boy. I'm glad I came back. Because uh, I wouldn't have liked getting ambushed. But other than that, if you do mean my actual hair, yeah, I, I have it combed today. Sometimes I don't bother combing it, but I usually always give it a wash before I go on camera, with few exceptions. If I'm having a particularly bad day and I need to decompress, then I will, uh, you know, I'll do what I can. I'll comb it if I think about it, and if not, I don't. Something else I've been trying to be better about is not being afraid to show people that maybe I'm not in the best of moods. Uh, from the light it looked like it was blonde? <laughs> oh, oh, I wish. But no, sir. No, no hair dyeing. I don't know. Uh, I guess I sort of have a corporate image. I don't know if hair dyeing my hair would necessarily send the best signals. A lot of people do it for charity, which I will dye my hair for charity. That is something I will do. But I find it, I, I kind of find the gesture of hair dyeing over something so, I don't know. Like, donating to charity is one of those small yet really important things at the same time. It both holds no weight to an individual who's doing the donation, unless it's for a cause they believe in, or... You know, it, it's so significant that what does dyeing your hair really accomplish? Uh, you know, other than maybe changing your look. Uh, granted, sometimes the clothes make the man or make the person. But to me, and this is just my perspective, I, I don't really see dyeing one's hair for a stunt or an event as anything more than... Uh, you know, typical streamer influencer parlance. You do it to get attention and not because you actually want to. So, as as nice as don't as dying one's hair for charity sounds, I probably wouldn't be caught dead doing it. Especially because when I'm thinking about it, that's not, I'm not exactly known for being a disingenuous person, and that feels disingenuous to me. But I don't judge someone else if someone else dyes their hair. That's strictly me. I feel disingenuous if I do something like that. Um, and besides, if I, ha if, I, if I actually dyed my hair, I would probably dye my beard too. I'd have to. Um, otherwise it would look awful. Um... Making sure I don't miss messages here. Yeah, that's the thing about... If you're a man, if you're like a, a, a cis or a transman, and, and you're going to dye your hair, right? Like, you have an extra bit of baggage to worry about. That's, that's, that's your face. If you dye your hair, and you do not dye your beard, people can still tell that your natural hair color is one. So if you're like trying to get the gray out, Congratulations, you've got it on the top of your head, but the rest of your head doesn't match. Second, if getting the gray out isn't what you're looking for, unless you're trying to go for like a two-tone look, where your hair is like your facial hair is one color, your natural hair color, and your hair up here on top is what's dyed. Um It, it looks off. Like, you only do that if you're making a statement. Uh, and not anything else. 
Or, you know, I guess, I guess if you dye your own hair, um, if you dye your own hair, then you don't want a patch job. And so I can understand that. But then the alternative is, you know, if you if you know you can't grow, uh, facial hair, but you want to dye your hair, or you do have a full beard, but you still want to dye your hair and you only want to use the same amount of hair dyeing product as everyone else. And you should shave your beard. Like, go go clean if you're going to do that. There's no shame in that. If I were to dye my hair, I would either... I would either shave my beard for the duration that the hair dye is there, or I would um, get the hair dye. Can't... I always shave your beard because it's not actually beard. Can't grow a full beard? Ah. Is it a case of you can't grow a full one, um... And because it's patchy, that's usually the top answer. It's a lot of men have, have patchy facial hair. Even I got a, a patch. If I tilt my right side, there's a patch where it's thin here. Whereas if I tilt my... It's really hard to do with my left half. If I tilt to the left, there there's some patchiness there. Typically, I just make sure that... I, oh, and uh, hi, Rugani. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Hope you enjoy your stay. Good to see you. Um, my advice, if you've got a patchy beard, but you, you get it thick in some places, right? Like, if, if you have enough for a soul patch or a, like a partial goatee, then that's the facial hair you can wear. Like, rock it. Oh, and uh, don't mind this. This nice little uh, timer is to help justify people to people why I run ads. Or, you know, if they don't like ads, this is how you can avoid them. My apologies. It's on a two-hour timer. So it's just now coming up. Um, but yeah, that, that would be my advice. Is, you know, find the, fac the facial hairstyle that works for you and go with it. Some men also really like it clean. Like, no facial hair at all. And in that case, more power to you. Um, because just like there are just as many reasons why, uh, you know, one shaves their facial hair, there are just as many reasons why one lets it grow out. For example, the top answer among amongst men that I hear, uh, most beards you have is on the neck, <laughs> not much on the face. Ah, I see. So when you say neck, you mean like below your jawline, right? And nowhere else? No sideburns or anything? Because ty typically, if it's like... Give me just a moment. Okay. Just had to make sure. Yeah, I'm a little bit on the jawline. Hmm. Hard to judge without a photo, and I'm not going to ask for one. Don't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, if, if you know it, one other thing you could do, if you're, if you're still set on growing facial hair, you said it doesn't bother you. So I'm not saying that you are set on it. Just that if you were set on growing out your facial hair, I also recommend getting a, a second opinion from a stylist or a barber. Um, they would be able to give you a better assessment of, yeah, you should probably, you, you can get away with it, or no, you can't. And you should really just keep it clean. Um, I, I kind of have some baseline experience from having facial hair. And I've done my facial hair in a number of different styles. I've had mutton chops, I've rocked a goatee, um... Or I've, I've had a full beard, and I've had variations upon those same central things, but not much more than that. Okay, I found it. Yeah, these these casters are a bit insidious. They uh, they turn invisible, and they create all kinds of problems. I even had a cone um, spell ready for them, and I still had issues. Um, sometimes you can use the particle effects to tell where they're gonna be. Sometimes you can't. Oh, 
Okay, there you are. I hate these. They're not as bad as, say, the... They're not as bad as the marionette soldiers. What part of the map am I at right now? Um, we are past the King's Realm Ruins. Speaking of which, King's Realm Ruins does have an underground with a chest. I need to find it. I remember this being really tricky to find. Yeah, um, these guys are awful. They're somewhere between a um, imp statue and a dog. Where the imp statues are not that bad, but their movesets do catch you by surprise. And the dogs are... Well, actually, no. I take it back. I flipped those in my head. Dogs are annoying, but they're not not—they're not um, anything more than tedious. In, the imp statues, however, can kill you from out of nowhere. They suck. They're a copy-paste reskin from the Thrall, the um, Thralls or Peasants in Dark Souls 3. Any other guys? Uh, let me make sure I didn't miss something. Um, might, cut, might cut your long hair at some point, but you don't want to. That's fair. If your long hair works for you, feel free. I, I, the most, the longest I think I've had my hair is right about, it's right at neck length, just before it becomes shoulder length, and uh, I didn't like it then, especially because if you're, if you're going to grow your hair, you have to cut it. Not like completely cut it or anything, but you have to get all the scraggly bits underneath, the, the, the hair underneath. If you don't, it feels nasty. It can hold oil and excess sweat. It's awful. I don't like it, and I can't consistently get that cut, so I just keep my hair nice and short. Um, make sure it's not important. Okay. Longer hair takes more maintenance. Exactly. That's something else, too. Like, I don't mind shampooing um, and conditioning my hair. I actually split up my shampoo and conditioner for just such for just such a reason. I don't mind doing it, but um you know, you you start going through bottles bottles really quick if you're not used to or not ready for the shampoo um and conditioner. Also, if you're using a 2-in-1, I would highly recommend you stop because those contain chemicals that stifle stifle hair growth, from what I understand. Also, the ratio of um, nourishing essential oils in a two-in-one uh, is not at the correct ratio. So here, and this is why I was having a hard time with the King's Realm Ruins, is that these stairs are secret. I'll put a marker here so that when we get off of it, I can reference it. Also, there's a boss. And I forget that there's a boss here. Uh, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. Pretty hard to take care of it. And it's tedious. But I feel like I look so much better with long hair. I don't know which hairstyle would good on look good on you. Like, I, I'm too sexy with long hair. LOL. Very fair. I feel... Yeah. If, if you've got the energy to do that, congratulations. There aren't a lot of men who can say that they have long hair. If they do, it's either for cultural reasons, like they keep it in a turban or something. Um, or, you know, they were just, they were born with the long hair and they've never bothered to experiment with anything else. Uh, all right. Unfortunately, I can't stay, but I hope you have a good rest of your stream. Love you. Well, uh, love you too. Um, thank you for stopping by. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, maybe we can chat chat it up later. I do have. I think I do have some questions I want to ask uh, regarding like tabletop backstory stuff. But uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. Um, since I don't know about the uh, boss that's behind this fog gate. Uh, I will 
simply deign to talk once I see it. Certainly, you'll be running session till 9, so any time after that's good. Very well. All right, I might hit you up later tonight for questions then. Uh, hope your session goes well. Um, make sure to use the scary DM dice. Everyone loves that. I will see you guys on the other side of this fog gate. Oh god. Get me out. That's why I don't remember. I blocked this thing out of my head. Cause it gave me it gave me like minor PTSD. things. The Royal Revenants are like my worst or like the most disgusting, annoying enemy ever. Hate them a lot. They're very unfair. Um, the thing is, in Germany, it'll work. You'll be an assistant for the handyman, so it could be a, a pretty messy job with dust and different stuff. Um, I might suggest cutting it short. Uh, while you're working with the handyman and then if you figure out oh hey you know the hair isn't a problem or you you're working with other people and they typically keep their hair up um, then that's fine and I suppose it's the other thing uh, the other reason I kind of have experience on this is uh, or indirect experience I may be very clear about that is when I'm in class and it, you know, when I'm in class pretty much about once a week when I've got courses that require labs, we have lab safety protocol. So if you're a guy or gal with long hair, you got to put it up. It can't be hanging below your neck, basically. So if you have, if you have hair that comes down to your shoulder or down to your shoulder blade, you got to put it in a bun. Ponytail isn't enough. It's gotta be in a bun. So, if you're going to wear long hair and you don't have a, um, like a dress code or anything like that that, you're work that you need to deal with, um, my advice would be to keep it pinned up in a bun until you talk to your, your handyman or you have a conversation with them about it or... You watch other people at work who tend to either keep their hair up or let their hair down. Like, watch what they do. Don't, like, obviously do your own work, of course, but pay attention to them. And you might get a good idea of what for, for what you should do. Um, now, I guess in terms of its maintenance, which that is what you're talking about, yeah, that's kind of going to be a personal thing. If you let it get all natty... Uh, G-N-A-T-T-Y and you don't don't like it don't like it in it's natty greasy appearance maybe yeah maybe keep it short ultimately you're going to be your own judge on what you do and don't want to tolerate in terms of your hair for what it's worth I hope you get to keep your long locks uh, it's always better when you can work and be invested in a career path or field, and you get hair of your choice. You get to wear your hair how you like it. But sometimes, for safety reasons or for other reasons, you can't. And people have to be willing to accept that if they take those types of jobs. Like, if you know you want to be a lab technician, you're going to have to accept that you either need to keep your hair up while you're in there or chop it off. Like, 
wear it really short. I've considered going bald. Uh, or, like, shaving my head completely. Um, just to make sure that I don't, you know, get an errant spark or nasty chemical in my hair that I can't wash. Granted, if that happens, you know, I'm, I'm going to the shower station, but still, it's a, it's a safety concern I, I'm always worried about. Well, look at you. We don't receive many visitors. I presume you are tarnished? What brings you here? Ah... Uh. You would look like Heisenberg from the Breaking Bad TV series? I would. I would. And I've been called a skinhead before. Like, you know, the neo-Nazi designation skinhead? I've, I've actually... Uh, not on camera. But I have, I have shaved my head before. And I, I've been told I look like a neo-Nazi. So I don't do that. I don't, I don't want to be labeled a neo-Nazi. Not even on a lark or whim, uh, bald men with facial hair tend to get that comment a lot in the U.S., especially with, of certain skin tones. If, if you're of darker skin, they tend not to say it so much. But if you're a white, bald, per white, bald male with facial hair, yeah, you're getting the neo-Nazi slander labeled on top of you. I've had my own family comment on how similar they... On how similar my bald head looked to a, a skinhead's, in which I would always be very upset. I hate that comment. That's if I were to ever show my bald head, that be the that would be the type of thing that gets me to turn my camera off. For the record, I do not like that. Oh, pardon me. It's hardly my place to ask, is it? I am E.G. A blacksmith who once served the Karian royals. An old codger who refuses to retire his rusty hammer. So here I am, still quietly plying my trade on this spot. Perhaps you'd like a display? These bones are old, but still able. Okay. So before I, t I comment about EG... I, I want to be very clear. I didn't say... I didn't talk about the skinhead stuff to say that what you said was an insult. I clearly know that's, that's not an insult. You're telling me if I shaved my head bald, I would look like a specific character. That's fine. I, I'm, more, I'm more so laying it out there in the open so that people understand if, if, if people genuinely care about my feelings if I were to ever go bald on camera don't say that I don't like that just like I don't like the R word for similar reasons I hate that word I was insulted with it my entire life um I had to deal with adults and children very very careful about telling people that I'm, I'm saying all this tons of people can hear it where anyone can load load up the internet and find it uh, I it looks good on my end okay good um To sort of boil down what I'm, I'm saying with and sh and sort of uh, breathe it, um, because I've been s been bullied with it my whole life. There are a few things that really get my attention. There are a few things that really bother me, and those uh, the skinhead thing and the R word get me more than anything else. I don't like those. That that's all, that's all there is to it. I don't, and nobody here has ever said those words to me, and I feel perfectly, I feel perfectly fine. We have a good community here, and I am grateful. Now, to move the subject to greener pastures. 
wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, E.G. is a troll knight with a specialized helm on his face. He is a smith. So, like, Master Hugh back at the, uh, back at Round Table Hold, he will actually smith our stuff for us. He also sells somber smithing stones up to plus three. He's just really good. Um, he will upgrade your stuff the full, the full way. No, no questions asked. Oh, 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 oh. I knew I was forgetting something when it comes to these changes. Okay. So in a previous patch, I think around 4.59, we, we had lobbied for a cold staff. And we got it. It's in the form of the Dark Glintstone Staff. I'd like to read this. Staff imbued with a blue, a blue glintstone, this unassuming staff harbors the hidden chill of the moon in its wooden frame. Enhances cold sorceries. Um, I believe by 10 or 15%. Um, really good. I don't think we have a model change for it. We do not. It is, it is the same staff currently. But this used to be the, uh, this used to be the Carrion Glintstone Staff. Excuse me for just one moment. I'm hearing some stuff in the background. Sorry about that. I had to go remind them that I'm trying to stream and they can be heard on mic. Um, let's see. What is he reading? Ah, uh, that is a very good question. I, I'm not sure what he's reading. I it, know it's a book from the Carrion Royal Library. Um, but I do not know. Yeah, look, if you try to try to like zoom in on its contents it just fades out it's not very this has been deliberately obscured i'm sure whatever they used as a model for the book either had text that they could not copy for copyright reasons or you know the player was most likely just never intended to look at the model like look at how low res that is that is very blurry it, it is obscured on purpose in a sea of other high quality objects, the low res on this book really stands out. My dogs are probably barking at someone outside. Ah, because I had something ordered. Um, I hate to do this again, but I already know that my folks are going to ask me questions, so give me a hot second to fill these. I'm going to run a very short ad and I will be right back.
I am super sorry about that. Um, <laughs> this that should be the last time we come out of the house or that I go out of the room. Um, we do only have 15 minutes, so I don't want to do too much on camera, but um, I want to make sure I don't miss any questions. Uh, how many doggos are in the house? Three. What breeds? Um, we have two dachshunds and a bl uh, black Labrador. Two dachshunds, one's red-haired, one's long-haired, one male, one female, and the black lab is female. Their names are Junebug, Milo, and Midnight. Midnight spelled with a T instead of a GH. They're nice dogs. They are loud, though. They are very, very loud. Um, I suppose, since technically I'm over time and do want to give 15 minutes, I do want to outline what we're going to be doing um, Sunday. And I need to kind of mention my altered stream schedule. So I suppose this is probably as good of a place as any to sort of call it. Um, our plan is to fi is to go ahead and finish exploring the ravine the lake here um and go through the carrion royal manor that has quite a few things uh to uh, that has quite a few different uh npcs in it they are mainly going to be out here on this rise area this cliff here but there are there is one in here that i should and do want to point out because you can go the entire time without seeing this NPC. I won't, I'll mention his name in the next episode. I don't want to spoil it now. Although anyone who wants to look it up can easily go find a Lyernian map and do that for themselves. Um, once we finish with the Carrion Royal Manor, um, we're going to start cleaning up toward the center of the map and get all the treasures that are here. And pick up on a certain someone who may or may not be related to an NPC that we currently have access to in uh, the roundtable hold. That's pretty much going to be our focus. Um, once we do that, the next few episodes are more or less going to be... Um, Coin is going to go look up all the item locations of things he might have missed. Um, places he might have forgotten. And... Oh, we're going to do a cleanup before we even think about going through the academy. Because that is, that's like Stormvale Castle. It's a legacy dungeon. Um, so it, it's, it's a big spacious dungeon in its own way. Now, that I've, I've done with that. Stream schedule. Stream on Friday as normal. This is on Twitter, by the way. Another reason to go follow me on Twitter if you haven't done so already. It lets you keep up with these announcements. But for those who have not have not done so, or don't have Twitter, I understand both of those. Um, starting Sunday, we're going to be streaming four days a week. Three of those are going to be on Twitch. Twitch people are going to get the same exact amount of content they get now. The only thing that changes are the hours and the days that are being streamed. That's it. Um, on, I believe it's Friday is how I have this written out. Let me uh, go back here to my office and just confirm these things. Yes. So on Friday, I'm going to be testing the waters with streaming on YouTube with one of the YouTube projects that I was working on beforehand, whether that be Elix or Grim Dawn, one of those two things. Just gonna test the waters. Um, and it's YouTube exclusive. So if you like old, old RPGs that are far more suited for YouTube VODs than anything else, that's gonna be where you wanna find me Friday. And I'll, I'll put out notices. Um, now, the YouTube stuff won't start until 
I have the YouTube stuff set up properly. YouTube has a few different alert types that Twitch doesn't have, and vice versa. Uh, so everything I have doesn't map over on a one-to-one -one basis. Also, um, there aren't emotes. There are a few other chat features that aren't present on YouTube that we'll, I'll have to make adjustments for. Also, there are no extensions of any kind. So YouTube has a lot more work I need to do on it before I make it ready. But that is the plan. Four days a week, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday with my uh, Saturdays um, and Mondays free for me to do other stuff. That is the plan. Um, I will give you guys regular updates on when that is supposed to be happening. But the Twitch schedule... Um, it more or less starts at the same time. It's just rolled an hour back and ends one hour earlier. No, I'm sorry. It ends at the, it's supposed to end at the same time. So from 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and all four, all three of those days that I'm streaming on Twitch, I get a, um, they get a one hour extension. Um, it's just that when, when the games are being played is what's changed. Nothing else. Um, I think I've, I've probably yapped your ear, ears off enough about that. Um, I know I said I would give you guys 15 minutes. So I suppose what I should probably do is talk about some things we can expect for the next two months. Um... For those who are watching this as a VOD, you could probably cut it off at this point. It's not super important. Um, for everyone else, the reason th this temporary shifted schedule isn't going to last long. About two and a half, three months, something like that. The reason for this is I recently had a course withdrawal. I think I mentioned this on camera earlier. I'm sort of spitting it out now in an official capacity. I withdrew from my last course, so I'm not attending any classes right now. And because I'm not attending any classes right now, um, I have basically what amounts to an extra 25 hours to work with for streaming, recording, whatever. Um, I'm not the happy owner of that free time. I don't like having this free time. I would rather be taking my classes right now. But, A, um, my stress has sort of reached its limit above my head. And B, more than anything, I've got someone else's basic needs I kind of have to look after now. And so I'm, I'm run a lot more ragged than usual. So that, that's, that, that should address the change in schedule. Let me make sure you're not missing anything. Um, and I'm not missing any private messages either. Doesn't look like it. And that's, pr that's pretty much what I have to say. The rest, the rest of it's not so important. Um, but I do want to thank anyone who chose to stay here for this, basically what amounts to a, a 10 minute amble that serves no purpose other than information. I do appreciate that. Thank you guys for following me on Twitch, Twitter, wherever. I also appreciate it. Appreciate all your support, especially the lurkers. Wouldn't have much of a stream without one, without them. Excuse me. Um... We're going to go find someone to host, or raid, excuse me. Um, what I'm thinking is that I have a usual person I like, I like to go to when we're streaming Elden Ring stuff. And his name is Gino. He's a very relaxing Canadian streamer. That being said, he is not available today. So instead, what I'm going to do this point you guys to another um 
another RPG streamer. He streams a lot of stuff. He's also Canadian. His name is Cheese Whiz. I'm going to build rapport with him before I personally go, go and start raiding him myself. But I do... This does give me the opportunity to test out the shout out command. And it should be just like this. Nope, all lowercase after that first letter. Yes, they are currently playing God of War. This is not the Ragnarok stuff. Ragnarok is still not out yet. But that is what they're doing. If you guys like... It's both a relaxing stream, but it, it also has some high energy. If you want something different than what I provide. Because I'm not, I'm not a very energizing streamer. I know this. That's not the audience I attract. I attract people who like talking about serious things. People who are... If, they, if they're in a high energy state, it's because they're actively in a high energy state state of mind I, I don't naturally attract that sort of people and if I do they don't stay for long usually usually um but I think that'll about do it for today's stream um again thank you guys appreciate it thanks for showing up uh Ro and Alex um having my small my small active viewership that I do really means a lot to me because otherwise, I would have still been talking to myself today. Which is fine. I can do that. But it's always better when we have real people where I can take a break from talking about game stuff all the time. This is an LP. This is what I'm supposed to do, is talk about game stuff. But I don't mind, and especially because it's live content, I, I like having our real-world discussions and whether it's something as simple as long hair or uh, or if it's about philosophy or something more serious. But I think I, I've yakked at you long enough. I do enjoy our exchanges. And please know that I'm being as genuine as I can be. Strong emotional responses were never my forte. That's why I keep telling people I'm not a Markiplier, I'm not a Jacksepticeye, I'm not someone who does funny meme content. I wish I were that person. I'm just not. Maybe if I had more native energy I could be, but I don't. So what you see is what you get. But I appreciate people being accepting and understanding of that. I've given the shout out. So this will be my cue to say sayonara. I'm Coinstamp, otherwise known as Swirling Vortex 09 on YouTube, and this has been uh, another episode of Elden Ring Reforged. And with that, I will uh, see you guys later. Stay safe out there, and take care, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>